All right, now I'd like to walk you through some of the details of the VIs in this project. We'll begin with the one for learning your public IP address. Let's do a control E to access the block diagram. There's three major parts. The first one is forming the endpoint URL. And that's what's fed to the get VI. I'm using concatenate strings in a couple different places. I'm also using a uh, select node to determine whether or not to feed in the IP string or IP address or whether or not to feed in a null and so forth. But the main idea is somehow or another you form that URL string. Once you have the endpoint URL, you can fetch the web page itself, and that's with the HTTP GET. You can retrieve both the body as well as the returned headers. You typically don't see that information when you're browsing the web, but it is available if you'd like to see it. Third step is parsing the returned JSON string. The parsing is set up by a cluster constant. Let's open up the cluster constant by double-clicking the frame. And inside the cluster constant, I have a number of string constants, each labeled according to the um, value inside the JSON string. The parsing then is handled, and you can then select using unbundle by name any one of the elements that you've retrieved from the, that JSON string. These values in turn, I'm sending to the front panel. Let's take a look at the specifics of the JSON string again. I'm looking up the web server ipinfo.io. The JSON string from that endpoint URL includes, again, we recognize these from the cluster constant. Each one of these is a string, so we have IP, hostname, city, region, etc. So again, the JSON unflattener reads that JSON string and pulls off the actual values. Let's move on to another example. It has basically the same three parts that we saw earlier, um, using a little bit different technique for forming the endpoint URL. I'm using format into string, I give it a, a string, and I have placeholders for a couple floats and a string. The floats are for latitude and longitude, and the string is for the GeoNames username. Well, let's give this a try for a specific latitude and longitude. I'll also try the demo username, although it may not work since I've used it a couple times already today, and it looks like it's not going to work. The complaint here is that the required fields are not being found in the returned JSON string. But again, just to confirm what the completed query would look like, you can see how the values were filled in, and this is the result that we got. All right, let's try one last one. Again, each of these has essentially the same three-part technique, and I wanted to draw your attention to dealing with a little bit more complicated JSON string. So in this case, we have an extra input feeding unflattened from JSON. To show you what this is all about, I suggest you take a look at the help page. And in particular, this input, which is called the path, gives you the ability to select specific pieces inside the JSON string before you actually attempt to parse it. You may need to study that help page to help you um, set up a cluster constant for more elaborate JSON strings. To show you what happens if this is not done, it says the cluster element was not found in the JSON string. Now clearly there's a lot going on in here, and what we notice is that we have an, an array element indicated by the square brackets, and it's called results, and the only other element is status. What we need to do is pull out the, the contents of that first array element called results. So the first element is element zero, not element one. Let's give it a try now with this properly connected. 
And now we're able to correctly extract what we need from that record.